Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare. We continue reading from Srimad Bhagavatam. We are on Canto 4, Chapter 11, Text 19. So, an Nanto Anta Karakalo. So, Ananto Ananta Karukalo. Nadi Radi Krit Abhyayaha. Anadi Adi Kritya An Vyayaha. Janam Janena Janayan. Janam Janena Janayan. Marayan with you Nan Katakam. Marayan with you Antakam. My dear Dhruva, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is ever existing, but in the form of time, he is the killer of everything. He has no beginning. Although he is the beginning of everything, nor is he ever exhaustible, although everything is exhausted in due course of time, the living entities are created to the agency of the Father and killed through the agency of death, but he is perpetually free of birth and death. The supreme authority and inconceivable power, a translation and purport by the divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swamishwar Prabhupada, the supreme authority and inconceivable power of the supreme personality of Godhead can be minutely studied from this verse. He is always unlimited. That means that he has no creation or end. Krishna, God, he's not, it's not that at one point of time, God did not exist and then he took his birth and then he started existing. No, he's eternal. Eternal. And he's unlimited. We have limited energy. We have limited things that we can do. But Krishna, he is unlimited. He can do anything, anytime. That means that he has no creation now and he is, however, dead in the form of time as described in Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says, I am dead. I take away everything at the end of life. So in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna tells to Arjuna, Kalos me, time I am. So this time, you know, we, we may not surrender to Krishna, to the personal form of Krishna. We may say, no, Krishna does not exist. But we will have to surrender to him in his form of death, in his form of time. In the material world, time has a very deteriorating effect. Everything vanishes with time. Eternal time is also without beginning, but it is the creator of all creatures. So time is eternal. It's not that time is temporary. Time is Krishna, the impersonal form of Krishna. So time exists. Time exists in spiritual world also, but it does not have the deteriorating effect as it has in the material world. In the material world, time has manufacture date and then we have expiry date. With the time factor, everything deteriorates. But in the spiritual world, there is no deteriorating effect. The example is given of touchstone, which creates many valuable stones and jewels, but does not decrease in power. Similarly, creation occurs many times. Everything is maintained, and after a time, everything is annihilated. But the original creator, the Supreme Lord, remains untouched and undiminished in power. So we may think that, oh, Krishna is becoming time. Krishna is becoming this material world. But we have to understand all this is his energy. It's not that he's personally, uh, you know, well, in a way there is no difference between the energy and the energetic, but still there is a difference. He's still a person. He's still in Golok Rindavan and by his energy, he's creating this entire world. And But it does not mean that because he has created the entire world, his power becomes less or his, his energy becomes less. No, it's unlimited. The secondary creation is made by Brahma, but Brahma is created by the Supreme Godhead. So as we know, Brahma does the 
visarga, the the secondary creation. The primary creation is done by Krishna. The elements are created by Krishna: earth, water, ether, mind, intelligence, false ego. All that is created by Krishna. Brahma ji cannot create; he gives shape to the living entities. He gives shape to these planets. But the elements are created by Krishna. Then Lord Shiva annihilates the whole creation. But at the end, he is also annihilated by Vishnu. So Lord Vishnu remains. In the Vedic hymns, it is stated that in the beginning, there is only Vishnu and that he alone remains at end. So then annihilation, Lord Shiva is in charge of annihilation, but he is also annihilated. So it's only Lord Vishnu who is remaining. Lord Vishnu starts the creation. After the creation also, everything is gone inside the body of Lord Vishnu. An example can help us to understand the inconceivable potency of the Supreme Lord. In the recent history of warfare, the Supreme Personality of God had created a Hitler. And before that, a Napoleon Bonaparte. And they killed each each killed many living entities in war. But in the end, Bonaparte and Hitler were also killed. So here, Srila Prabhupada is trying to help us explain. If we are saying Lord Shiva annihilates everything, then how is he annihilated? So Srila Prabhupada is giving some example which we can understand. Hitler and Bonaparte killed many people, but eventually they were also killed. People are still very much interested in writing and reading books about Hitler and Bonaparte and how they killed so many people in war. Year after year, many books are published for public reading regarding Hitler's killing thousands of Jews in confinement. But no one is researching who killed Hitler and who created such a gigantic killer of human beings. So Prabhupada is saying, okay, we are trying to understand Hitler, who killed so many people. But what about trying to understand why was Hitler killed? If he had the power to kill so many people, why was he killed? And who killed him? Who Who's the ultimate killer? The devotees of the Lord are not much interested in the study of the flickering history of the world. They are interested only in him, who is the original creator, maintainer, and annihilator. That is the purpose of the Krishna Consciousness Movement. So we should try to understand, oh, we are all dying, but why are we dying? Who has made this law of birth and death and old age and disease? That's the research work we should know. And that is what, uh, that is the purpose of the Krishna Consciousness Movement. Because it's God, God, it's all God's laws. It's all Krishna. Any questions or comments? No. And then we will continue. Navay sapaksho sya vipaksha evava. Navay sapaksho sya vipaksha eva. Parasya mrityor vishataha samam prajaha. Paris parasya mrityo vishata samam praja. Tam dhava manam anudhavanti anisha. Tam dhava manam anudhanatvanisha. Yatharajasmi anilambu tasangaha. Yatha The Supreme Personality of Godhead in his feature of eternal time is present in the material world and is neutral towards everyone. No one is his ally and no one is his enemy. Within the jurisdiction of the time element, everyone enjoys or suffers the result of his own karma or fruit of activities. As when the wind blows, small particles of dust fly in the air. So according to one's particular karma, one suffers or enjoys material life. Although the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the original cause of all causes, he is not responsible for anyone's material sufferings or enjoyment. 
you know, we say, why am I suffering? Oh, Krishna is the cause of all causes. Sarva karana karanam. So that means I am suffering is because of Krishna. But no, Krishna does not interfere in that. He's not responsible for our enjoyment or our suffering. He's created this material world, yes, because it was our desire to stay separate from him. It was our desire to, to enjoy separate from him. So he's created it. But what we do, we are getting the result of that. Like the teacher, she grades the students' papers, but she's not partial. Whatever a student is writing on the exam paper, she just gives them grades according to that. She's not saying, oh, this one is a good one, so I'm going to give them more marks, or this one is bad, so I'll give them less marks. No. Whatever is required, if they're answering the questions properly, they get marks according to that. So there is no such partiality on part of the Supreme Lord. The less intelligent accuse the Supreme Lord of being partial and claim that this is why one enjoys in this material world and another suffers. It's not that that Krishna is making somebody enjoy and making somebody suffer. Krishna is our supreme father. Each of us are his children. A father is not going to be partial to one and say that you, I want you to suffer and another person to, to enjoy. No, father is always impartial. Uh, but this verse specifically says that there is no such partiality on the part of the Supreme Lord. Living entities, however, are never independent. As soon as they declare their independence of the Supreme Controller, they are immediately put into this material world to try their luck freely as far as possible. So we, we think we are independent. We have this desire that I want to become God. Why is Krishna God? I want to be God. That's why we are put here in the material world. And then we act and based on those actions, we get the reactions. When the material world is created for such misguided living entities, they create their own karma, fruitive activities, and take advantage of the time element and thereby they create their own fortune or misfortune. Everyone is created, everyone is maintained, and everyone is ultimately killed. As far as these things, three things are concerned, the Lord is equal to everyone, and it's according to one's karma that one suffers and enjoys. So we can see somebody is born in a particular family, somebody is born in a particular family. There are differences. Why such differences are there? You know, why someone has more, someone has less? What is it? It's all based on this law of karma. The living entity's higher or lower position, his suffering and enjoying are due to his own karma. The exact word used in this connection is anishaha, which means dependent on their own karma. So Krishna is not responsible for our enjoyment or suffering. We ourselves are responsible. The example is given that the government gives everyone the facilities for governmental action and management. But by one's own choice, one creates a situation which obliges him to exist under different types of consciousness. So the, the government is giving us the infrastructure. We are staying in a country. They're giving us the laws, in, infrastructure. Now, what we do? That they don't interfere. They are not going to say, oh, you work like this or you take up this position. No, that depends on us, our desire. The example given in this verse is that when the wind blows, particles of dust float in the air. Gradually lightning occurs and then torrents of rain follow. And thus the rainy season creates a situation of varieties in the forest. God is very kind. He gives everyone an equal chance. But by the resultant actions of one's own karma, one suffers or enjoys in this material world. So it is our, our, we have a choice. We are making our own destiny. Because we have a choice of how to act. And then we, we do that action. And based on that action, we get a reaction. For example, if we sow a rose plant, 
what will we get? We will get roses. If we are going to sow a mango seed, then we will get a mango tree and then we can get mangoes. Similarly, if we grow cactus, then we are going to get cactus. So it depends on our choice. We have this minute freedom. And what is the freedom actually? Whether we choose Krishna or we choose to go away from him. That is what the choice actually boils down to. Are we choosing Krishna or to be with Krishna or are we choosing to go away from Krishna? Is that okay? Yeah. Ayusho Pachayam Jantos. Ayusho Pachayam Jantos. The Taibo Pachayam Vibuhu. The Taibo Pachayam Vibuhu. Ubhabhyam Rahita Swastho. Ubhabhyam Rahita Swastho. Do do stasya vidadhati aso. Do stasya vidadhati aso. The Supreme Personality of Godhead Vishnu is all powerful and he awards the results of one's fruitive activities. Thus, although one living entity's duration of life is very small, whereas that of an another is very great. He is always in his transcendental position and there is no question of lessening or increasing his duration of life. Both the mosquito and Lord Brahma are living entities in the material world. Both are minute sparks and are part of the Supreme Lord. So we may be in the body of a demigod or we may be body of a mosquito, but the, the soul is the same. I mean, what do we mean to say is that each is an individual soul. Not, it's not that it's the same soul, but the, the bodies are different. But inside the body is a living entity. And that living entity, that spirit soul is part and parcel of Krishna. Minute sparks. The size of the soul is one ten thousand, the tip of a hair. That's why we are called minute sparks. The very short duration of the life of the mosquito and the very long lifetime of Lord Brahma are both awarded by the Supreme Personality of Godhead according to the results of their karma. So why is somebody in the why is the mosquito's life so short? Why is Lord Brahma's life so long? These laws are made by Krishna, he's the lawmaker. And then who is put in the body of a mosquito and who is put in the body of a Brahma? depends on our activities. What karma are we supposed to undergo? What actions have we done? And based on that, what reactions are waiting for us? Based on that, we will get a particular type of body. Everything is happening under the supervision of Krishna. But in the Brahma Samhita, we find it is said, karmani nirdahati. The Lord diminishes or vanquishes the reactions of devotees. The same fact is explained in Bhagavad Gita. Yagnarthat karmano anyatra. One should perform karma only for the purpose of satisfying the Supreme Lord. Otherwise, one is bound by action and reaction of karma. Now, if we want to stop this karma, get may do something and then get a reaction for it, then we have to be in the material world too. To face that reaction, it could be a good reaction or a bad reaction. But just to be able to face that reaction, we still have to be in the material world. So what does Krishna say? Krishna says, you work for me. Work for my satisfaction. And in that work, there is no karma. It's called a karma. That's what he's saying. And in that way, we don't need to be anymore in this material world because there's no more reactions waiting for us. Could, there could be good reactions or bad reactions, but then there are no reactions. So no reactions then can go back home, back to Godhead. 
under the laws of karma, living entities wanders within the universe under the rule of eternal time. And sometimes he becomes a mosquito and sometimes Lord Brahma. To a sane man, this business is not very fruitful. Bhagavad Gita 9.25 gives a warning to the living entities. Yanti Deva Vrata Deva. Those who are addicted to the worship of the demigods go to the planet of the demigods. And those who are addicted to worship of the Pita forefathers go to the Pitas. Those who are inclined to material activities remain in the material sphere. But persons who engage in devotional service reach the abode of the Supreme Personality of Godhead where there is neither birth nor death, nor different varieties of life under the influence of law of karma. So Krishna is saying in Bhagavad Gita 9.25, Yanti Deva Vrata Devan Pitre Yanti Pitre Yajan that where, who are we worshipping? Whatever, whoever we are worshipping, that's where we are going to go. We worship uh any particular demigod, we worship the sun god, we are going to go to the sun planet. We worship the moon god, we are going to go to the moon planet. Depends. Each, each demigod has their planet. So whoever we are worshipping, we are going to go there. Now we may worship the ancestors. Then where will we go? We will go to the planet where the ancestors live. It's called the Pitralok. And then Krishna also says in this same verse that those who worship ghosts and spirits, where will they go? They'll take birth among the ghosts and spirits. But he says, those who worship me, those who are engaging in devotional service, where do they go? They go back home, back to Godhead. They go to Golok Vrindavan. And in Golok Vrindavan, there is not, no birth, no death. There is no law of karma. There's no reactions. You know, it, it is Vaikuntha. It's the spiritual world. It's the eternal world. The best interest of the living entity is to engage himself in devotional service and go back home, back to Godhead. So it's in our interest if we can take up devotional service, if we can take up hearing and chanting. It is for our benefit, our eternal benefit. We are doing so many things that are beneficial to us. But those benefits are limited to certain time, place, and circumstance. They would be limited till the time we are in this body, maximum, if even, you know. But if we engage in devotional service, that we can get the highest benefit, and that is we can go home, back to Godhead. We can revive our spiritual form, our spiritual body, our love for Krishna. Shla Bhakti Vinod Thakur advice, my friend, you are being washed away in material nature's waves of time. Please try to understand that you are the eternal servant of the Lord. Then everything will stop and you will be eternally happy. So Shla Bhakti Vinod Thakur is one of the acharyas in our line. He's given, he's written great literature, great bhajans. And he's saying, my friend, you are being washed away in material nature's waves of time. That's what we are. We are in this material world, which is compared to an ocean. And in the ocean, there are so many waves. And we are being tossed in those waves. Tossed. We are just tossed. He's saying, please try to understand that you are the eternal servant of the Lord. We, we don't want to accept it. We don't want to understand it. But he's saying, just try to understand. You are eternal servant of the Lord. Once you understand it, everything will stop and you will be eternally happy. Why? Because once we are, someone understands, I'm eternal servant of the Lord, then they're no more acting on the material platform, acting on the spiritual platform, acting for the pleasure of Krishna. And that gives immense happiness. Devotional service is joyfully performed. It gives the highest joy, the highest bliss. Are there any questions? No question, but like how nicely. <coughs> Sorry, it is explained again and again, like what we have been reading, even in Nectar of Devotion, the same things were mentioned. And also here, 
it is so nicely in a in a very organized way that this is how the result and then because so many doubts come maybe in some people's mind sometimes again and again that why 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 because everybody say that why people are poor and why people are rich so it is all explained so nicely that why it is and then also very 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 important point that krishna is not partial people might have that oh he just respond to his devotees but his devotees are also not you know they are also in suffering but that doesn't mean that there is a deeper meaning he's just connecting he just responds he just connects with his devotees so he's not partial he's there for everyone yeah, this is very very beautiful and even in the mukund mala stotra king kulukshetra is also again and again and again emphasizing this point that krishna i just want to serve your lotus feet so the importance like in the last part when we read that so the importance of our own identity and then serving krishna is also emphasized again and again by prabhu pad so this is like you know very important points that we need to remember every time because we are in the material world we will forget we tend to forget but we have to remind ourselves by reading by chanting by listening it is really beautiful yeah thank you thank you and and then but you know also about the law of karma someone may be in an unfortunate position but we can't go around telling them oh you know this is yeah. all your karma you did something yeah, bad yeah absolutely yeah we have to show empathy to people yeah. this is yeah. for us to understand yeah but for ourselves we need to remember right not to yes. others but yeah. for ourselves for we ourselves. need to remember yeah. yes that's yes yes and we cannot and, blame others for that right yeah although it's not easy but we have yeah, to try to remember that and then as a practicing devotee yeah and then lord brahma says that they no come from so samiksha mano in bhagavatam 10 chapter 14 He says that a devotee, when he's suffering, he takes it that it is his karma, and at the same time he continues worshiping Krishna, and then liberation becomes his rightful claim. So a devotee, when he's suffering, he says that, "Oh, my suffering could be much more. This is Krishna's kindness. He's reducing my suffering." And when the devotee is happy. he says uh um, oh i don't deserve this happiness but krishna is encouraging me by giving me this happiness this is what it, how a devotee is depending on krishna in every situation yeah. Yeah. so thank you so yeah. much for listening and joining in thank you we'll stop here for today Okay. 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 Okay.